Well, let's go to some uh, deeper analysis, should we, with former Labour adviser Scarlett Maguire, former Conservative adviser Claire Pearsall and political commentator Alex Armstrong. Um, Claire, I want to start with you. Where does this leave the Tories? Well, I think you're going to hear quite a, a lot of spin being put on this this morning, but essentially this is not a good result. And I don't think that anybody is going to come out and say that the uh, Conservatives are doing well when these by-elections were quite obviously a sign to the government that people are unhappy. I think the Wellingborough result was really interesting, being uh, one on local issues, which I think are really, really important. And it does surprise me that the Conservative Party didn't put more of an effort into either of these two seats. And I think that is the main difference that we've seen between by-elections previously and these two, is that the uh, CCHQ and the government have not put people out there on the media or out there on the streets as they would have done. And I think that is one of the reasons for this loss. Alex Armstrong, let's bring you in at, at this point. Um, how much comfort can the Tories take in what Jeff Moody was talking about, which is that the swing is not that bad in Kingswood, that's according to uh, Sir Jacob Rees-Mogg, and also that turnout was low. Can they take any comfort in that, or was this just an awful night for the Tories? I don't think they could take much comfort in swing. I mean, it's very different in a general election, as we've been saying. But frankly, there's been a lot of mistakes made by the Tories in the run-up to these by-elections. I mean, not only was it, did it land, unfortunately, on the day that a recession was called, which you can imagine would have inspired voters to go, mm, I'm not sure about voting for Rishi right now. But they also had Peter Bone's partner, the disgraced former MP, uh, standing as their candidate. And they're being double-flanked on immigration and the economy on both sides. So maybe they can take some comfort in some number somewhere. But quite frankly, they need to look at how they're campaigning and have a look at their general approach to the, the election that's rapidly approaching them and see whether it's like they can actually win because quite frankly it doesn't look like they want to win it does it it doesn't look yeah. like they're trying to win um and you know kings kingswood was a winnable seat for them yeah. but they're not winning in kingswood because they are losing votes to reform which are strong on immigration so where where are they they can't have the economy as their major talking point they can't have immigration as their major talking point what are they going to have their platform be Mm. Scarlett, in, in all of I mean, look, great night for the Labour Party. Great night. There's no getting away from that. But it's still, it's an age-old question, <laughs> isn't it? Is it because people want to vote Labour or because people are fed up with the Conservatives? Well, I, I mean, I think that's really interesting. But I think a lot of the fed up with the Conservatives have actually gone to reform. And mm. I, I think that when, when uh, Christopher Hope says quite reasonably, you know, but if reform had stayed at home, I mean, if reform hadn't... Sort of have, have uh, done it, then, you know, the Tories would have won uh, with a lot of ifs. But actually, they would have stayed at home. I mean, the people would have stayed at home. People actually have come out and voted for Labour. And basically, in both of these seats, it's absolutely clear that the Conservatives had given up and they gave up from the beginning. They didn't even try. And you think, OK, just give up now. Give us a general election. That's what people are wanting. Let's just get it over with and see what's happening. And let's have, let's have a massive one. I mean, by-election after by-election after by-election, polling, polling, polling. People are fed up and they want to change. Can we just yeah. say quickly on this point about people coming out to vote? Because this is a really important point and it is obviously lower in a by-election. Mm -hmm. Labour only got 100 more votes in Wellingborough. So it, it's not a substantial change for Labour. Of course, they would have picked up some Tory votes because a few Labour, Labour votes wouldn't have come out here and there. But we're not seeing a substantial growth in the Labour vote from their previous result. What's happening is that disillusioned Tory voters aren't showing up, mm -hmm. which is going to hand the Labour Party quite a lot of seats, particularly if this is repeated in a general election. Ah, well, that's, that's the key. Claire, what do you think of that? Because there, there is an argument in, in all of this to say, isn't there, well, come a general election, actually, this could be a lot tighter. That's right. I think people do behave differently when it's a general election as opposed to a by-election. And we ought to be very, very careful at extrapolating the results of by-elections and making that the national picture. But I do think that the Conservatives have an awful lot of work to do. They need to work on their ground 
um, operation, they need to select their candidates a lot better and, and learn what they're going to campaign on. And unless they do that, then Conservatives are likely to stay at home. I'm not sure that a lot of Conservatives will go over to Labour, but they may go over to some of the other parties. But this is a really important point that we shouldn't extrapolate too much from by-elections. However, we can see that the road ahead is going to be really, really tough. And it's now up to the Conservatives to prove that they have the metal to take on a general election campaign and also the right candidates and the right messages that people are after. Because unless they have that, then I'm afraid that the general election is lost to them. Mm. I mean, alarm bells are going to be ringing in Tory high command, isn't it? <laughs> Claire, I mean, what do you think Rishi Sunak could possibly come out and say? Because to so many people, they're going to feel like uh, they're going to have nothing new to offer. And we're in an election yeah. year. And, and that's always the problem. And, it, and in defence of the Conservative Party, after 14 years, it's always going to be hard to put a message across because you get shouted down at every opportunity with what you haven't done. So the Prime Minister needs to come out with some positives and stop relying on five pledges and come up with things that people are encouraged by. Because unless you have hope, you aren't going to go out and vote. If you're being told the whole time that the Conservative Party are negative in certain areas, then that's what sticks in your mind. It is now incumbent upon the Prime Minister to prove what the party is positive about, and that is the real challenge. I know Scarlett's itching to get in. Before we come to you, Scarlett, let's just have a look at your winning candidate, should we? Um, first of all, this acceptance speech, and then we'll hear what he said to us here on GB News. Thank you for giving me your trust and for allowing me to serve the community that I'm from. It's a trust that I promise to repay, to show you that politics can be different and that it can make a difference. In Kingswood, as across the country, 14 years of Conservative government have sucked the hope out of our country. There's a feeling that no matter how hard you work, you just can't move forward. And that with Rishi's recession, we're left again paying more and getting less. It doesn't have to be this way. You know it, I know it, we all know it. I think when we're talking to people, we talked about the issues that people were raising. The top ones with us was um, NHS, cost of living and policing. But, you know, cer certainly other issues as well were coming up. But, um, but no, I'd like, I'd like to think um, that we won the election on our own back by working hard and getting a good message out there to, to the voters of Kingswood. Well, it's interesting, Scarlett, we're talking about messages, or Claire was talking about messages of hope that the people need. I mean, of course, anyway, winning candidates full of hope, aren't they, in, in all of this. He seems like he's got a stronger message for his constituency than Keir Starmer's got for the country. No, I, I mean... Th we have to have hope, but, but we know that things are going to be difficult. But what's so interesting about these by-elections is, uh, is Wellingborough in particular. Wellingborough is not a seat that Labour would hope to win. Mm -hmm. And actually, what, what would be a more interesting by-election is, 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 is one in the Red Wall, mm -hmm. wh where Labour is standing, because mm -hmm. there is a slight problem we're not going to discuss, uh, but where Labour is standing, where you see what happens. Because... because that's where Labour people, as Boris put it, lent their vote to the Tories and Labour are trying to get it back. Um, I mean, it, it's and, and that would be more interesting than Wellingborough. Wellingborough, where, frankly, I mean, the Tories completely screwed up. Mm. I mean, they, they did choose a candidate that... It was like shouting at the people, we don't care that you've thrown out Peter Bone, we're going to have his, his mm. partner. I mean, it, mm. it was incredible. Whereas, I mean, I would find it more interesting and I'd be very happy to come back here where, to find out what would happen in the Red Wall mm. because I think that's, that's where we're going. I mean... Do you think with the Red Wall then, you know, tra as you say, traditionally red, went blue in 2019 yes. people were fed up with Brexit. Could they go even farther right now to, and, and vote reform because they, they still feel they haven't had the response they want? Well, I, I think it'll be split. I think some people will go to reform because, because they're completely fed up with the Tories. I mean, I was doing one of your outside broadcasts in Barnsley 
There were about 100 people in the room. Not one was going to vote Labour or Tory. Mm -hmm. They were all saying Farage. But I don't think that, I mean, I really don't think that they're going to win seats there. I just think that they're going, they, they're going to pull the Tory vote. But I think Labour will, will, will actually will, will win those seats back, partly you know, because they, I mean, they have been working them, but I mean, also because there is a, there, there, there is the only hope. I mean, that we keep forgetting in the Westminster village, I mean, just how badly off people are. Mm. The cost of living is terrible. I mean, on Nigel Farage's programme last night, they had the woman who runs the Trussell Trust, who was just saying it was awful. It mm. was just terrible. And we have to remember that people only go to food banks when they're mm. referred. You can't just walk in and take food. Um, and she said it really was terrible. And by the time people went to food banks, they were already in debt. They were already owing on their electricity. And the numbers were going up all the time. And that's what's, that's one of the many things that are going to lose the general election. For it, well, it's going to be interesting if ultimately the, the great British people decide that Labour's to be trusted on the economy more, which was never previously mm. the case. Or not, we did not, win in 97. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then we won three elections. Well, we had, you, well, we had a did. good economy. Well, you, yes, that's absolutely right. But then you lost the faith. Didn't you? It was Gordon Brown, you know, with the, the prudent Chancellor who stored up all that money and all those reserves until he became Prime Minister and then spent so them all Even off. there was a global crash which which Gordon sold off got, our gold which reserves. Gordon got the blame for there was a gold, there was a global crash and actually the Americans feel that he did save things right. because he knew what to do I wonder well, if the yeah. Labour Party will say that about Rishi now there is a global recession yeah. Yeah. well, yeah, well we're the worst oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Get it Scarlett, Claire Alex we'll see you all a little bit later on thank you That's right.